Fragile World, the Rock Hopper Penguin page. We've had a bit of a pause between filming, um, so I thought it would be really good to come in and finish this beautiful page together. Now, I don't know if I'm going to finish it in this video um, or in two more videos, but we're going to go and see how much of this we can complete. And then I'm going to start firstly with finishing the penguins and then we can move on to the rocks and the vegetation. Um, as you would have remembered in the previous videos, we've already done the sky with chalk pastels. We've done a base on the rocks with ink tense pencils. I've also shown you how to do the beak and these um, tufts of hair or fringes. Um, so nothing else le left but to get stuck coloring. Now the whites of the penguin's tummy have already been done and we used a variety of pencils. So if you go and check the second part of this series, which I'm going to link up here in the corner for you, you will see that um, how I colored it in. And bearing in mind that we never color white, pure white, we always put in different colors to add those shadows and add a bit of 3D effect to um, our white objects. Um, also bearing in mind in real life, um, a penguin's white belly is not necessarily going to be pure white. It might have some um, dirt on it due to mud or maybe other things, maybe the beach, rolling on the beach or something. I'm not 100% sure, but I just know it's not going to be pure white. It's going to have shadows. So I've put those shadows in and I take you on the process of doing that. So we're going to come back to this guy here. Um, We've only really got two little penguins here to complete and these penguins. So that's going to be our focus. And then depending on time, we might move on to the, uh, the plants. If not, we will do that in the next video. Um, as always, I'm not going to necessarily complete each element um, on camera with you. There will be a few that I will complete on my own off camera. But I will make sure that I show you enough to get you started. The same applies for the rocks. Um, I'll do several rocks and several bits of plants with you and then the rest I will complete off camera. I do this to save your time and my time. Um, I don't want to create videos that become boring to watch because we're just coloring in the same thing. Um, so I want to be able to get you started um, so you can carry on with the picture on your own and um, you don't have to listen to hours of silence while I get lost in the zone. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get started on finishing these two penguins together. Um, as mentioned in part two of the series, I did the smaller penguins, so definitely go check out that video, which I've already linked for you. Now, what we've done here, um, you will see I've already got the blue indigo i've got some black grape i've got some brown dark umber going on here and i think at this point it's really coming down to going over that either with a bit more of the dark grape and the indigo before we layer over our blue i'm um, sorry not our blue our black now we do have to remember there are bits of um, highlight we need to bring in so along here we need a bit of a highlight and that's where we're going to most likely use either a light a cool gray pencil um, maybe a 10% or a 20% gray pencil and then we'll have our darker shadows now along here this is going to have a bit more of a shadow than up here but we're gonna just go along um, if you are more experienced with a light source and lighting then please do um, adjust your version of this picture accordingly. I'm still growing in those areas so my sense of di light direction is not going to be very good. I tend to follow the line art where possible just to help me. Okay so I have got in my hand the blue indigo which is PC901 and I'm just going to go over wherever I've put bits of blue. I want to just bring that blue out a bit more and just build it up. Um, the key with all of this is layers. 
I was recently asked how do I get my pages to have such a bright finish to them and this is why I push the pigments I'm always layering as much as I can um, I am a bit of an impatient layerer in the sense that whereas um, maybe more professional and more experienced colorists or artists would layer up a bit slower and a lot lighter um, I do that up to a point and then I get impatient and off I go and I start applying harder pressure and before we know it I'm done because my impatience has kicked in um, now I don't know yet if that's a positive thing or not um, I just know that that's what I do um, the when you want to get a rich color it really comes down to layering your colors and saturating your paper now that doesn't necessarily mean that you burnish it I'm just going to zoom you in a bit more so you can have a better view um, it really doesn't mean that you burnish the paper what we're really going for is more um, layers the only time you burnish paper is when you have finished putting down all the layers you want and it's almost like that final layer and you want to really make sure everything comes together and that's really when you would go about layering um, burnishing your paper bearing in mind that when we burnish we are actually damaging the tooth of the paper now I have heard some people say that um, Kirby Rosanna's books don't have very good paper. I'm not experienced enough to say that. I actually like the paper. It is smooth, so it doesn't have a rough texture and the um, pencils do glide over the paper. But um, I appreciate the fact that I can use Prismacolors in here. I can use ink tents. I can use a variety of medium. Um, maybe it's be just because i'm not i'm a self-taught colorist i mean i as i've shared in previous videos i didn't go to art school or do it get a degree in art so my experience is still growing and yeah i wouldn't be able to comment and say that his paper is not good or other books are better um kirby rosanis is by far one of my favorite type of books for uh, affordable I think for the price you get you pay the paper that you do get is pretty good and I really appreciate that because I want to color my books um, and enjoy them I don't uh, I don't want to spend a fortune on on pay on books and then not color them because I've spent so much money and I'm I'm reluctant to to mess up um, so I do appreciate the, the paper in these books and the variety of medium I can use. Alright, so as you can see, I'm just going around here and I'm making sure that I can put in some of this and just layer it up now. I've already put down a layer of this color. Um, so what I do is I tend to call the first layer of pencil um, my base layer, whether it's ink tents, watercolor, or just um, the first layer of, of it, any colored pencil. I like to call that my base layer. And I also use it to help map out my, my coloring, my shadows, where everything is going. Um, it, it really just helps me. When I do that now with black if you were to color black straight um, it's not gonna have a lot of depth to it it will look black but it will have a flatness to it and that flatness is what I'm trying to prevent by using blue purple and brown now what works so nicely with the black grape is it's really dark it adds that purple tinge to it and if you look um, 
especially at a raven or a crow, um, even a, a magpie, their black feathers are not actually just black. When the sun hits them, they have this beautiful like shine to them and, and you can see hints of blue and hints of purple or um, if you look at the starling birds, I mean, there you get a variety of, of different colors coming through. And I imagine when it comes to penguins, it's pretty similar. You would have the sun hitting their beautiful black coats and black feathers, and it wouldn't necessarily look like it's um, just straight black. Um, I imagine that you would see hints of blue or hints of purple to it. Um, so that's why I picked out these colors, as I want to mimic some of that. Um, now, I've not really seen penguins much up close in real life. I've seen them at the zoo, um, but they, they really move. So they don't stand still for very long for me to really notice. Um, where the pigment is going in their fur and that sort of thing. So I'm also drawing on the similar principles to coloring black hair, where when you color black hair you use a variety of blues and grays, and you have maybe some brown, and the dark umber over the dark indigo they work together to create a bit of a black look to it. Um, so that's what gives that color um, or that style of black a much more, how do I put it, deeper color. Whereas if I just took a black pencil, I mean, it, it probably would work, but it wouldn't be as rich. So I'm, I'm just trying to take those principles and apply them here and hope that I'm doing it all right and that the, it will turn out okay. Now I'm not worrying so much about feathers um, like I would if I was coloring a parrot or a crow because in my memory, whenever I've seen penguins, um, especially if they've just come out of the water. And here I'm, I'm going to pretend that they've just come out of the water and they've taken up their place on the rocks and they're going to sunbathe. Um, their, their coat is, the feathers lie really, really flat and kind of, kind of together. So I don't notice individual feathers um, the same. So I'm not going to be worrying about feather texture in this. I'm going to be trying more to just make sure that I'm creating a sense of, like here, this needs to be quite light, but over here it's tucked in, so that needs to be quite dark. And along the side of the wings, I need it lighter than I do darker. So I'm just really going to go for that sort of effect um, instead of making sure it's individual feathers. Um, At least that's that's how my mind is understanding it. Um, there are a couple of YouTube artists who specialize in animals. Um, I would like to <laughs> work on their channel, you know, go onto their channel, find their courses or um, just practice their style. But I'm, I'm just a bit pressed for time at the moment. I find as the boys get older, in one way I get a bit more time for myself, but in another way I don't because they need me to take them all sorts of places or I need to make sure I'm emotionally available for them. So it's still, it's not always as simple as, okay, I'm going to, this is the dark umber now. You know, it's, it's still not as simple as just putting, sitting down and, and doing things. Um, and because I've got three children, um, I just find my time is really pressed. Um, but on the other hand, 
everything has its time and when the time is right I can sit down um, and watch these professional artists and actually try and draw and, and color in step by step with them um, but in the meantime I can also see what videos there are on YouTube and follow along on those so now I'm going over all of this with my dark umber because I want to layer the brown over the dark indigo to try and create that um, that black effect let me just deepen all of this up and I'm probably going to use a 20% cool grey I must confess I am trying to work up the courage to go back into Ken Matsuda's coloring book and finish my one and only whip in that book. Um, yeah, I think that also has really good paper in it. And I just, I don't know, I started and I tinker in it and then I, I just freeze, my brain just freezes and I'm not sure if I'm just intimidated or because I'm trying to copy one of his works to get myself started if that's creating like a bit of a mint, uh, a block. So I'm really not sure what's going on with me. Um, on the other hand though, I came across, I think it was on Pinterest or Instagram, this, no it wasn't, it was Facebook. And somebody on my Facebook feed had shared this um, gorgeous, gorgeous house. Um, and it was yellow and it had a yellow tree in it. So I got thinking of one of the Tomislav Tomic books. Uh, I think it's Drum, Drummondbunga or maybe known as Villain's Son, depending which version you have. And... I decided oh there's a page in there that would work perfectly so I'm really itching to get into that um, and and try and color that now I don't know if I should use um, inktense pencils and but I'm really really nervous that if I use inktense pencils I'm going to go and completely ruin the other page because of bleed through so if you have done um, intense pencils in any of Thomas Love Tomic's books, please let me know in the comments whether or not they bled through because I really want to do this picture and I, I'm just not sure what the best way of doing it is because I don't yet have any water-based markers and I'm toying with the idea of getting them um, but they are the Tombow water brush markers are really expensive. I mean, they're on Amazon, and you're looking at about 250 pounds, which is really a lot of money. Um, so I don't mind saving up for it, but yeah, I'm just a little bit anxious because I'm not really good with markers, um, I don't use them a lot, they're not my favorite medium, and I do think water-based markers would probably work better for me than alcohol-based markers because I could use them a lot more in my coloring books and not necessarily, um, how do I put it, I wouldn't worry as much about bleed through. I've been noticing a lot lately people coloring with uh, water-based markers and showing that you don't get bleed through and I, I honestly I wish I'd saved up the money and gotten water-based markers instead of alcohol markers but anyway um, my kids enjoy alcohol markers so that's fine they can use it and enjoy it and at least it helps give them a good art experience when they're not on the xbox playing tv games <laughs> oh my gosh Right, so I have not forgotten the um, requested colour-alongs in 
fragile world. Um, a few of, of you gave me some suggestions for color alongs in fragile world last year. I do have them tagged and I have planned at least one other page. So I have every intention of coloring every single page in this book and hopefully we can do quite a bit of it together. If we can do it together as um, color along, that would be really, really great. We can color this book together. Um, I am thinking of getting Kirby Woods, um, Alien World. There's a lot more pages in there that I find intriguing. So if you are interested in coloring Kirby Roseanne's Alien World together and, and we can maybe make it that we color the book together, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear if that is something you would be interested in and then we can commit to, to doing that. Okay, so I've built it up. I've got um, my shadows there. I think I'm going to get a... Um, let's see... A 30% warm grain. I'm going to come along these edges here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my black pencil and this is where I'm going to, with a bit more of a heavy pressure. Now you don't want too heavy a pressure where you actually break your pencil. And you'll see where I've gone over with black and blue and brown or black grape. It's going to have a much stronger feel to the black. We can take PC 1068.
So this is back to PC1068. <coughs> and then we have our black. And also you want to try and work in the direction of the feathers. And then PC1068 again. Now we want black. PC1068. All right, PC1068.
All right, PC 1068. Keep coming here. PC 1068. All right, and then my black. Somehow I've got a mark in my paper and I don't actually know why. So I'm just going to have to just deal with it. 
because there's nothing I can really do. I mean, it's really in there. Almost looks like graphite pencil or something went over it. Alright, so as you can see, there will be, you can see there's bits of light, places where it's darker and lighter, and that's because of how I've layered up the um, black over brown, grey, I'm sorry, not grey, dark indigo, dark grape, and that sort of thing. So it already naturally gives a bit more of a mottled effect without having to use a great pencil to blend out so here I take 1068 and I'm just coming along the edges here because the otherwise if I don't bring in some of this gray and just create almost like a highlight area around the penguin his feathers are going to get lost in this area here of the rock. So I really need to try and make sure that something around him just separates him and keeps him his own distinct unit. Now if you wanted to blend some of this out a bit more you could use a mineral spirits because mineral spirits is not going to damage the tooth of the paper or you could use um yeah you could use a um blending pencil and that would also work So there you've got it. Um, because I've got some tooth of the paper, it's really showing a bit more of like a feathery look to it without me even really having to, to work for it. Okay, so that is the adult penguin done, and it's pretty much the same thing for the baby penguin. So I'm just going to go over, sharpen my black pencil, and then I'm going to go over the baby penguin's feathers, and he will be done. And then we need to do the eyes, but I need to look up how, what I need to do for the eyes. So again, I've got my black pencil. And 
and I really want to encourage you to not be afraid of going dark, especially in your shadowed areas. Um, I watched another tutorial or video by Color My World, and she was um, talking about another colorist's beautiful um, picture. She was using it as a teaching tool. But even there, she was saying, that the person who colored it could have carried on layering up. And I mean, the, the person who colored this picture did such an incredible job. It really did look done. And yet um, somebody like Color My World, who has an art degree, is an art teacher, was saying it's not done. It just needs more color amongst other things. Um, so I really do want to encourage you, don't be afraid of pushing the color. Don't be afraid of going dark. Um, because the more you pigment you put on the paper, the more you work on those shadows and those highlights, keeping your shadows dark, your highlights um, bright, bright and light, um, you're creating the contrast. And that's what really is going to help your work be what, you know have that wow factor or pop maybe pop is a better word to it um and it was a watching this video was another great reminder for me as well to just not be afraid to push the color to keep layering to keep working each picture until it's actually done um because so often we think something's done and it's not done because it could still do with a few more layers um, and I know, I think it's, um, oh, there's another YouTube channel, Pamela's Passion for Pencils, I think that's what her channel is called. She's quite popular as well, loads of colour alongs and tutorials and, and all of that. She's done, she's really, really good at what she does. And even when you watch her video, she says the same thing. If you think it's done, just go in and add a couple more layers. Um, so, I mean, I could leave that now. And, it, and I suppose you could say it is done, but it's not done. It needs more layers. It needs me to keep pushing this black over the other colors and make sure it's smoothed out. Um, so I'm going to keep going over it. Then I need to bring in that PC1068 pencil. And I need to bring that in for my some of my highlights. And then I need to go back with my black pencil and just touch up. So you've got to keep just working and working and working with it. And it's going to get to that point where you're going to go, oh, either the paper can't take any more pencil or you look back and you think actually I've done a few extra layers and it does look spectacular and I'm really pleased with it. Um, so that's my encouragement to you. It's just keep pushing the pigment. So like here I'm going to go lightly with my black but in here I need to go hard because that's really dark down here. And this needs to be light but here needs to be dark.
Alright, so now we're going to take PC1068. I want a little bit of this under here because otherwise his chin is going to get lost in this blackened section of the rocks. And I can do this with the black pencil in here and really tidy this up. So I had a quick look at rock hopper penguins and I noticed that their eyes are very similar color to their beaks. So I'm going to use um, PC922 Puppy Red. Oh, let's get it to focus. And PC923 Scarlet Lake. And then for the eyelids we'll use Seashell Pink PC10... Oh, sorry. 1093. Okay, so using the seashell pink PC1093, we can come in here, add in a bit of the dark umber PC947, just ever so slight, and then you blend it out with PC1099. Um, okay, so I'm going to come around here with my black pencil. All right, PC922. Actually, add a little bit in here in the eyeshadow, the eyelids. Okay, and then PC923, which is Scarlet Lake. And then you can use PC947 Dark Umber. And I like that. And then go over it with PC922. We need a bit more of that Dark Umber here. And then a bit of that poppy red, PC922. And then your seashell pink, PC1093. Okay, PC1068. Just help blend it out. And there you have it. Those are our two penguins. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to do these two penguins 
off camera because it's pretty much the same thing as I've shown you in both the second part of the series and in this video. I will see you in the next video where we will carry on with the rocks and the plants. Until next time everyone, take care. Bye for now.